to another episode of the Electric Motorhome. Well, it's been a while since we talked, or at least since I posted a video. So I decided what I'm going to use to run this machine, this motor, would be a variable frequency drive. Now the problem is, these things cost about $3,000. A few weeks ago, I found one on Craigslist. Variable frequency drive. And it's a 30 horsepower, 480 volts, exactly what we need, locally in Portland. No competition, it was definitely worth the wait for a hobby. Can you hear that rain? That's coming down outside. So this is the back of the motorhome, and the sequence of events that will happen will be, outside the motorhome will be a generator. The generator will come through, and attach to the disconnect here and then from that disconnect we'll go to the variable frequency drive in the cupboard where the wires from the disconnect are connected to L1, L2, L3 now then on the other conduit from terminals T1, T2, T3 they will go down the conduit to the front of the motorhome to this disconnect here now and from that disconnect it will go outside to the electric motor and that is where it all happens yes and here is the variable frequency drive here look at this thing it's quite heavy it's probably about 70 pounds easily and uh, what I ended up doing was I put it in the cupboard of the motorhome now I figure that we're probably going to have to put a fan in there I'm sure it's got a fan in it, but you know what, keeping these things cool is of paramount importance. So, there's the frequency drive, and just down here, I've got my two conduits coming in. This one here goes to the power supply, and this one goes out to the motor via the disconnect. Look at that. And it's got a remote. <laughs> so anyhow, the power goes from the variable frequency drive into this disconnect, and from that disconnect it goes onto the motor. I'll show you what it looks like inside. There she is there, see? That's just a disconnect, there's no fuses at all, but it is rated for 600 volts. We are running for 460 volts, so it's well within the tolerances of this apparatus. And this is the, these wires here from the electric motor. And the next thing to do is to push some wires through there down to the variable frequency drive. Okay, now, and so, on the other side of this firewall is the disconnect. And from the disconnect comes this conduit with four number six wires, and that goes into the electric motor. So that's where it finally ends up. The power ends up here at the electric motor. And the other conduit goes underneath the motor home and is supported by straps and stuff and ends up at the variable frequency drive. And here we are getting all prepared for winter. Then these three wires here, black wires, go to the electric motor. They come and terminate here on top of the disconnect switch itself. When that switch is closed, these wires, these wires are then connected to these three wires here. One, a two, and a three, right? And this size of wire is number six THHN. Even though the current will be something like 33 amps running through this, you've got to allow for, you know, startup current, and all this kind of stuff so it's better to err on the side of safety than to make your wires too small and then looking down here these three wires go on to the variable frequency drive into this conduit here this is a flexible conduit I use because it's really easy to install and it's quick and of course we do have grounding wires which goes from the electric motor and is grounded to a terminal around about here 
there's a terminal that is attached to this can and then this wire is joined to that wire so these three terminations you've got your can ground and you've got this green wire here and this green wire here this green wire comes from the motor that green wire goes to the variable frequency drive just to keep everything you know safe all right now at the other end of the conduit that comes from the disconnect we have the three wires here and the ground wire which I've connected to the ground terminal right here at the back of the variable frequency drive now these three wires here are going as I say eventually to the motor so we're going to connect them to terminals T1, T2 and T3 the power from the inverter and the batteries or the generator those three phases will connect to L1 L2 and L3 okay so now we're just going to connect these guys up loosen the screws and the very important thing is to get your screws nice and tight on that wire because I've found in my experience most electrical problems come from um, bad connections you know connections being too loose when you start to get the arcing and the sparking and you know on the next thing you get heating after arcing and sparking and then you get fires okay now we've got the three wires here on terminals t1 t2 and t3 next thing is just to cinch them up give them a bit nice nice and tight talk to about 103 psi no i'm only kidding just nice and tight okay looking good here and that's how it's supposed to look now next we take three wires this size number six put them down this conduit and take them to where we're going to have our power being supplied because this variable frequency drive is quite heavy at least 70 pounds I put it on a sturdy shelf and put a rib underneath it just to give it extra rigidity so that would take care of the weight and then to stop the whole thing flipping backwards I built another ribbed piece up here you know just a flat piece of wood another piece of wood uh, drilled screwed and glued together so you get a nice you know stiff thing this doesn't want to be wobbling around because we're carrying 460 volts in it so that's what you have to do just make sure you put and of course the back up here I screwed the variable frequency drive onto this wood here and don't worry about it being a combustible surface it's not going to get that hot on this next conduit here we we'll need to pull wire in like we did here so what you do, you use one of these things, it's called a, a nylon fish tape. So that goes down inside the flexible conduit and it should come out at the other end. And then once, once you get to the other end, you just attach your wires and pull it on through. Or, alternatively, you can use a thing called true tape. We have a second disconnect on the back wall of the motorhome same size as the disconnect in the front now we just pushed the nylon fish tape through the conduit and it came out here this is the conduit here so you can either attach your wires under here and pull it through if you know how long the wires are or you can use a thing called a true tape and that's just a piece of tape with feet and inches written on the on the length of it so you can calculate you know exactly how much you need we got 0442 feet here so we're going to start from that and then it just pulls off and then we can calculate the length of the wire that we need and the reason I'm using this is because copper wire is not cheap anymore it never was really right now then we're going to pull our fish tape out 
and hopefully on the end of it is that true tape <laughs> with the length we need. Look at this, what a surprise. Yes, that came through great. So now all we have to do is go down and buy some wire, number 6 copper, which is the actual recommended size for this type of unit. Okay, so I measured the length of that tape and it is exactly 10 feet long. So what we're going to need now is three conductors of number 6 black, 10 feet long, and then we'll need one conductor of number 6 green, 10 feet long. I'm sure you could probably get away with using number 8, but I've got some green on hand. This disconnect at the back of the motorhome is for to disconnect the generator to the variable frequency drive. So if something happens with the generator, I can just turn it off at this disconnect. It's all to do with safety. Okay, so now we have the wire pulled through from the disconnect at the back of the motorhome. The ground wire goes onto the ground bus here. Phase one happens to be in red. I got some red wire. And phase two, and then it's phase three. These are all coming in from the generator. Phase one connects to terminal L1. Phase two connects to terminal L2. Phase three connects to terminal L3. As you can see, this L1 an L11, L2, L22. Now then, sorry, L21. Now that's so in case you want to connect an alternative power supply to the, to the variable frequency drive. So now we have our wires landed onto the disconnect that goes from the elect electric generator to the variable frequency drive. Now to connect the wires onto the terminals above this switch you have to remove this screw here. There's a screw and this just pulls off. And you can see your terminals that you put your wires to. And each of those wires has to be nice and tightened down. A good nice tight fit works. Now we have attached a ground lug to the side of the disconnect and put our ground wire through it comes from the variable frequency drive into this ground lug and then out and this is going to connect to the ground that goes to the generator all right so till the next episode hopefully the generator will have arrived from china and everything will be hooked up and let's see this thing go